Good morning and welcome to Morning Movie News, which today is another all viewer question episode, which I'm doing not just because you guys are asking great questions and I want to keep up, but because three of you happen to ask questions that kind of fit together. They're all about behind the scenes aspects of movie making and two of the three are about fields we don't normally discuss on this show. So the first question is from Jason Phillip. And this question says, Hi Grace, uh, I hear a lot of directors say that if the star of their film had not signed on, that they would not have been interested in making that film. However, I'm not convinced, as I think you can always cast someone else. What are your thoughts? Well, Jason, good question, first of all. Um, but I think that a lot of the times when a director is saying that, it's just to be polite to the actor that they did work with. Oh, I can't imagine working with another uh, actor. Oh, it wouldn't have been the same movie that has done so well for us, which is why we're discussing it. But of course, you know, at the end of the day, this is a career, and I, I think there are a few directors who would say, you know what, forget it, I'm not going to make this great movie because this one actor won't sign on. Uh, some cases, uh, you know, a, a director will sideline a project or put it on the back burner to wait for that actor to become available. But I think if an actor were to give a straight no, I think that it would be irresponsible for the director in terms of their career and also, you know, and, and to the audience. You know, if you want to get a great story out there to not just find another actor. And I think that while I think that while there arguably are some roles, like for instance, Daniel Day-Lewis, who else could play Abraham Lincoln so well? But I think that, you know, there are a number of roles where, of course, another actor would have been different, but who's to say wouldn't have been equally as good? Uh, but I think also another factor here, another scenario where this might be the case, is when uh, a director is making a film because of an actor, or they feel the script has problems and maybe wouldn't be able to do well on its own. So if it didn't have the certain star in it, who this is a good fit for them, this plays well with their demographic, it's not worth making the movie without them because it wouldn't succeed. And, and that's, that's an unfortunate situation. I mean, of course, we'd like to assume that every script is wonderful, every movie is great, uh, and so therefore you could just slot in another actor or another great actor who's available. But a lot of times there's a film, there's a property that's okay, it's passable, but then they feel they can get a really great star to make it work. And I think in those circumstances that could also be what those directors are referring to. That, you know, it wasn't worth making the movie uh, really to begin with, but without that star it's definitely not worth it. But I think overall that's just the directors being polite uh, and not wanting to, uh, you know, to, to upset their actor and just keep the relationship going well. And also, remember, these things are often said when advertising a movie or, uh, you know, when uh, on the awards trail, the campaign trail. So, of course, they want to make it seem like no one could step into that person's shoes. But if we're only dealing with quality product, I think there are many people in front of and behind the camera who can bring it to life. Uh, not always in the same way, but, in, as I said, just in the, in, in the same quality. All right, so that's the first question. Uh, the second question comes from Strav91, who says, I have a vague idea, but what is the exact role of an agent, a manager, and a publicist when it comes to actors? Uh, what is the level of their importance in regards to an actor, and how much of an actor's salary do they receive? I'm particularly interested in what publicists do because it always seems like something of a shady job, considering there are so many stories planted. And, um, and uh, I lost my place. Oh, and actors from unnamed sources, about actors from unnamed sources. And I've always wondered why more actors who don't just, uh, don't just control their own press. Uh, by the way, Angelina Jolie does control her own press. She does not have a publicist. I don't believe she has an agent either there. So, I, mean, I don't think Bruce Willis, I remember reading, he doesn't have an agent. Some actors opt out of this traditional team, but most of them have the team. So that's what we'll discuss today. Uh, but continue with the question. Uh, uh, Strad91 has a couple of thoughts on this. Um, says, some of them need good PR, but some are, are quite, are, seem quite articulate and don't seem to have a need for a publicist uh, to sit in on junket interviews. By the way, you should know, Strav91, that publicists rarely sit in on interviews for junkets. Maybe for the big interviews, uh, you know, with like ET, to, uh, you know, Entertainment Tonight and such, or uh, uh, Access Hollywood, but largely the actor is in there on their own, which is why sometimes when you see junket interviews, the actor doesn't look so good because Shockingly, no one is checking their shot for them. I always find that very surprising. That you would think that the actor would have someone come in and look at the shot, uh, because it's done by somebody, you know, these junket productions who, you know, often is not like that's not they're not a professional cinematographer. And also, what's in it for them that the actor looks good? They just, you know, a lot of times point and shoot, and they're more concerned about that, you know, the poster looking good behind the actor. So they're not in there. So I think you'd be. I thought people might be interested to know that. Also, I understand good PR is a necessity for actors, but publicists seem to have 
uh, like they have more to do. Anyway, hope that question was worded okay. Yes, it was Strav91, and thanks in advance if you decide to answer this question. Smiley face. I have answered the question, Strav91, and I think it's a great question. Now, as I said just a few moments earlier, actors have a team uh, to rep not only uh, an agent, a manager, and a publicist, but, you know, usually a lawyer as well. Uh, and agents typically get 10% of the salary and managers actually get 15. Now as for the publicists and the lawyer, they tend to get, you know, flat fees, you know, not a percentage, but you know, it's 10 and 15% for the agent and manager. And sometimes you can only have one. You don't need to have an agent and manager usually. Uh, but there's the difference. A manager is somebody who kind of charts your career. They are concerned with your long-term plan, uh, you know, changing your image perhaps. Uh, that's, what they're, that's what they're interested in. That's their job. An agent, meanwhile, is supposed to just focus on the now, you know, uh, negotiating your deals, making sure you get a very uh, favorable contract, making sure you get, for instance, maybe that back end, making sure you get treated well on set, working in all those aspects. And I, I've heard a number of people say that agents don't actually get them jobs. Uh, you know, agents just really uh, negotiate the deal once it's been uh, reached. And so I think managers to some degree help get those jobs. But that's kind of the distinction between an agent and a manager. So if you want a simple view, it's uh, the future versus the here and now. Now, uh, the lawyer, of course, you know, will advise them and, you know, uh, they have a lot of things going on in their career. Sometimes they have, uh, you, know, you know, product endorsements. Also, sometimes they'll have accountants as well. That's another member of the team. That's why actors get paid so much money. They have their whole little, you know, little uh, teams to support as well. So when you think of actor salaries, that's not what they're taking home. That's like, that's what the agent has negotiated for them because they know that so, so much of it has to go out to other sources. Now, as for a publicist, which is the bulk of what your question is, Strav91, a publicist makes sure that this actor stays in the press and also manages any inquiries about them. For instance, when people want to know uh, what's going on, who's dating who, they reach out to the publicist. It's like a point person that the press knows they can go to. And that's a good way for you to control your press, to make sure that the right you know, answers or non-answers go out. Uh, you want to make sure that there's a, someone available, sitting and ready for when a story breaks, that you know, instead of the media speculating, particularly today, the media, if they don't have a legitimate story, will speculate in today's internet age. You want someone there to control control things. And of course they do plan stories. They do say maybe it would help if you dated my other client. You guys would both get in the news. Uh, and they also both also make sure they secure interviews. I mean there are a lot of interviews going on all the time. Uh, but also remember the publicist Okay, so they want interviews like maybe when uh, the publicist is totally in charge of an actor when they're in between films. But when an actor's on a movie, the PR uh, D uh, departments for the studio will come in and also work with the publicist to arrange all these interviews. So the publicist will also work in tandem with those people. But the publicist is just basically there to make sure that you don't get forgotten in the shuffle, that the actor stays in the spotlight. They'll set up the interviews, they have relationships with the press, they say, come over, do, do an article on my client. Uh, so that's, that's a big uh, aspect. Also, uh, look how the team continues. Also, the stylist. Uh, you know, the stylist will help decide what to wear for the actor, and that's another person they pay a lot of money to. And the stylist often does not do hair and makeup either. The stylist is only deciding what the person wears. So all these people you have to hire if you're an actor. But as for the publicist, the publicist is to make sure you stay in the press. And also there are a lot of uh, actors who that's their whole career is reliant on that. Look at Lindsay Lohan. Uh, you know, there's, a, there's been whole stories about these ingenues who maybe make one or two movies. Jessica Alba also, who keep their career going by keeping their name in the press, even though there's no studio working on doing that because they're not making movies. The publicist is the one who's taking care of that in the meantime. So publicists are very, uh, you know, crucial, especially I think when an actor is starting out and needs to make sure that they're their picture gets in the paper, gets in the tabloids, and gets online because you know they're not a name that the media is going to pick themselves. So you need someone to run in, and you might wonder to yourself and go, "Well, why am I seeing this person so much all of a sudden?" It's usually because they have a very good publicist, or perhaps they have a movie coming out, uh, and uh, the, the PR team for the studio is planting those stories. Also, that just reminded me by a publicist getting your picture in a lot of places and you're, you're covered in a lot of magazines, that puts you on casting director's radars. It puts you on director's radar, studio head's radars. And they see the magazine and they go, look who's on the cover, maybe we should consider casting. So, so it's all very incestuous. It all really factors into each other. Uh, and that's why a publicist is very important. So I hope that answers your question, Strav91. All right, so the final question for the day comes from Trevor Davis. And he says, hey, Grace. Love your show. I listen to it every day while I work in a marine science lab. Trevor, I found that fascinating. It gave me such context. I can practically picture you there. And I think it was just so, so interesting. And I thank you for telling me not just that you enjoy the show, but how you enjoy it. Because that really gives me a lot of perspective and it helps me to understand, you know, maybe what you like about it. It's just, I can't tell you how helpful and nice it is to hear that. So thank you for that detail. 
But Trevor says, I have a question as well. So thank you, Trevor. And I, I, that really made your question stand out. So, and I thought the question fit in here as well. But Trevor says, how would someone who did not study film as an undergrad pursue a career in the film industry? Are there no experience necessary post-grad schools? Also, what other careers are there in the film industry that aren't necessarily working on movies? I'm having a tough time figuring out what I'm going to do after I graduate and would love some advice. Of course, Trevor, I'm happy to help, and it's a very good question. Uh, a lot of people want to change their career post-graduating from school. You know, uh, people might decide they want to work in the movies later in life, and uh, that's a legitimate question. It's a tough road to, to walk, though. I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you. It's very hard to get into any industry without that, um, you know, taking the path of, of school and because that gives you the experience and you've studied it. It's very hard for someone, considering how much competition there is for these jobs, particularly in a place like the film industry, uh, to give work to someone who doesn't have experience, uh, especially someone who's older. I mean, someone younger, they can be paid less money. I think that's also factors into these, into these decisions being made. Uh, older, um, older employees have, you know, more needs, more, and you're more, it's a, more of a responsibility to take them on as employees. But it's not impossible. Now, I think you really hit the nail on your head with the no experience necessary grad schools. Uh, definitely there are. I think in many areas, for instance, business school, they love it when you go out and get some real world experience between your college years and then applying for uh, a graduate school. So I think the same thing was with film schools. I think a number of them would love the fact that, Trevor, that while you were in a marine science lab, you became interested in filmmaking. I think that makes for a great story, a great narrative. A lot of time, you know, I use narrative all the time in Oscar campaigns. You have to wage your own campaign to get into any school as well when you're applying for college or graduate school. So that's a great story right there. So definitely, I think at any point in your life, you can apply to a graduate school. And I would really recommend it, especially if you're doing a big career change, because it'll give you that experience you need. It'll allow you to intern. People are definitely willing to take on interns who are currently in school, be it even if it's graduate school. But, you know, they're very reluctant to take on interns who aren't currently in school and are older, because then it's like you can't live off an intern salary, and they just know that it's kind of a recipe for disaster. So I really think that the best course of action, if you want to do a late, a late career change like this, is to go the grad school route. However, I also understand that you know grad school is expensive. It's, it takes uh, you know a lot of time. It's time intensive. And it's not it's not always a path that's open to everyone. But don't despair. There is still some hope. I think that what you can do is you need to find that in, and that's where you also hit the nail on the head, Trevor, by saying. Uh, what are their careers that are in the film industry that aren't necessarily working on movies? For instance, if you work in a marine science lab, maybe you might want to look up films that are taking place underwater. For instance, the new Avatar movies have a big underwater component. 300, Rise of an Empire, <coughs> focused on naval battles. So that's another thing that you could look into. Uh, so I think that you maybe want to find a film where your expertise could be used and could be helpful. So that would get you onto a film set, therefore giving you the experience you need to parlay that into something else. So you tr always try to want to see what angle you can work and you know where people will be receptive to talking to you. So that's that's another bit of advice I would give you. And also, uh, finally, I guess I would say be realistic. Remember everything that I just said about the concerns of the employer, uh, taking on someone who's older, who has more responsibility, who needs to make a living. Uh, you know, Know, who isn't someone whose parents will support them, uh, and, and that there's very rough competition for these jobs. So I would say the best thing that you can do is to go to grad school. Uh, you can go apply to grad school at any point. I actually think, as I said, it benefits you to do it later on uh, because they feel you have more real life experience, which I, I, I've heard they really value. Um, and then also I would say if you can't do that, go and find an inn that works for you. I mean, they make movies about all kinds of different things. They make movies all over the world. I'm sure they make some close to you. You know, and you can go and, uh, you know, so it might be hard to get a, uh, a job where you have to have some know-how, but perhaps you can uh, apply to be someone's assistant. You know, go get them coffee, shadow them on set, and then uh, oftentimes assistant jobs lead to uh, great careers in Hollywood because, of course, you work such long hours together, people take a liking to you, relationships are built, and you can get experience and connections that way. So you just have to be a little bit more clever, think a little more outside of the box, and I think that anything's doable. If you really are smart about it, realistic with yourself, and you give yourself time that you understand these things aren't done overnight. So good luck, Trevor. Thank you for your question. Thank you, everyone, for your questions. Uh, Jason Phillip and Strav91, I hope everyone enjoyed this episode, and you can watch some more episodes right now.